Andrea May is a performing poet, a writer, a producer, a community curator, and organizer. Now she's Charleston's second poet laureate. I talk one on one with Asia for this edition of Quentin's Close Ups. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my YouTube channel and like Quentin's Close Ups on Facebook. Asia May, welcome to Quentin's Close Ups. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You're very welcome. It was great to meet you earlier this week. <laughs> <laughs> and I know, obviously, you're Charleston's Port Laureate. You're also a writer, a producer, a performing poet, and a community curator and organizer. Who mm -hmm. else is Asia made these days? Um, hmm. I think that I'm in a space where I can comfortably call myself uh, a, a freelance life liver. Yeah. You know, I'm kind of just moving through the motions and, and trying my hand at a lot of different things artistically and enjoying it. What else are you enjoying in that particular space artistically? Uh, well, I got into audio last year. My partner is like a uh, sound collage artist and one of my best friends is a musician. So it was just like a natural progression into to learning like audio interfaces and uh, how to record and and manipulate audio. So that's been really fun. Wow. And you talk about obviously being a freelance, you know, artist. Well, in that space of being an artist right now. When did you get to that uh, space in your life? Um, I really took a leap last year, actually. I'm coming up on uh one full year of kind of figuring it out independently. Uh, I worked for a friend and I realized that I really wanted to take the leap and, and pour myself into my art. So I, I quit my job and I took a couple little gigs around and yeah, it's it's been almost a full year. Wow. What is the biggest difference from a year ago to right now for you? Oh, man. <laughs> I feel like this has probably been one of the fastest changing years of my life. Oh, um, wow. This time last year, I was in a really bad emotional place when it came to my artwork and, and my living situation. And um, I feel like this year we're just in we're in a better, such a better space uh, mentally, emotionally and spiritually from last year. Oh, and I know something that you're still emotionally hanging on to is becoming Charles the second port laureate. <laughs> yeah <laughs> where are you emotionally still with that um i feel like i took december and january to really like ground myself in the idea of what i wanted for the position and celebrate with my friends and family and i've been really grateful for that so i think emotionally i'm ready to start moving things um yeah i'm ready to like really fully embrace the position what things do you want to move artistically? Hmm. I am a big comp uh, fan of incubators. Yes. Um, I, I love the idea of getting a tight knit group of people together to work on something, especially when it comes to improving and growing together. So I'd really like to start implementing some writing and also artistic incubators throughout Charleston so that we can really start churning out some, some good art. What type of resources do you have to push this out? Well, luckily, uh, I know a lot about grants. Yes. Um, and so I've spent the last year really uh, focusing on getting grants throughout other gigs. So I know uh, the applications and the processes to go through to get those. Um, I've also been a part of the community for a long time. Uh, so I have a little more access to venues um, and spaces for, for things. I'm, I'm very grateful that a lot of people who own businesses tend to trust me um, with their spaces. And I look forward to incorporating a lot of those people in with the art community. Asia, what is the state of Charleston's art community? Hmm. I feel like it, there's a resurgence. You know, I, I definitely feel like the pandemic put a damper on a lot of things. It also separated a lot of people who were doing art beforehand, who 
took long breaks during the pandemic and are, you know, trying to come back out now and they see what's happening and that, you know, there's like a whole new class and that's exciting to me. So I feel like, you know, it's a, it's a reemergence of what once was and coupling it with what's new and seeing what can sprout from there. So what is reemerging and really what's new with the art community right now? I think, uh, uh people are back to going events, but not just for events sake. Um, I definitely think that something new that has reemerged, well, from times past that is reemerging again now is uh, incorporating an element of mutual aid or some sort of helping. And with the events, like, you know, it's not just art for art's sake. Artists are realizing that they have a responsibility as well. And that's exciting. What is your responsibility in this arts community? Mm, I think currently my responsibility is to bring in uh, more resources for artists that are trying to make a living here. I also think it's my responsibility to push the the love and nurture the love for the written word and for, for art in general here. So what is that written word that we really have forgotten about? Hmm. I mean, I feel, <laughs> I feel like we went through this whole, like, everyone needs to be reading, but only these certain things. And I feel like, you know, people have to understand that the love from reading comes from just that. It, it's, it is not a hierarchy in what you should be reading. You should just be reading and, and devouring somebody's words and knowing that they put their heart and their soul into whatever it is. And, you know, learning what is, what is good art and, you know, what are good words and, and learning how to critique and accept criticism. Like, you know, the written word is a, it is a tradition that has been tweaked several times, but it's all meant for you to enjoy, you know, stories. Stories. And speaking of stories, Asia, what is good work and what is good art right now? Hmm. I think good work and good art is honest. Mm. I think it's honest work. It is, it is work that you can feel something from. Sure, sure. And that's what I, I want to see more of. And when you, okay, so what, what are you reading currently? Mm, um, I actually just got uh, an anthology that was reprinted um, called Black Women Writers at Work. Okay. Um, and it's, it's, it's sort of interviews um, with famous black uh, women writers like Itazaki Sanji and, and Toni Morrison, and Alice Walker. And it's just really been helping me in redefining my purpose, but also grounding myself in ritual when it comes to writing. So how have you been able to refine, redefine your purpose throughout all of this? I've been so lucky to have a, a community that not only knows me, but isn't afraid to, to call me in. And they've kept me grounded throughout this whole thing. I have tons of soundboards who I know I can trust. And again, who know me sometimes better than I know myself. So I've been able to hold on to the things that I want to hold on to and let go of the things that I want to let go of in order to embrace this position. So what have you been able to, you know, hang on to and what have you actually had to let go artistically? Mm. I haven't had to let go of anything yet. And that's been beautiful. Uh, I was very afraid about losing certain parts of me because I'm in this public facing position. Um, but I realized that I didn't have to do that. I'm just in charge of how much of myself I allow to come into the position. Um, and I think I've really been, been holding on to that. That, like, I can genuinely be myself and that it's important for me to genuinely show up as myself. And how much have you allowed yourself to be in this new position? Hmm. I'll say I'm about 50-50 right now. Okay. <laughs> like I said, I'm still easing into it. And I, yeah. I believe in giving myself so much grace for things. Yes. Um, but I've already had a lot, a lot of good opportunities and a lot of good conversations and, and connections throughout the you know, the process of getting in there. So I, I feel good about continuing on uh, underneath this role. Oh, yes, ma'am. Sorry, but this is Nats out here. But let me get you this. <laughs> I don't know where the Nats are coming from. Oh, God. But nonetheless, let me ask you, 
what are, what are the conversations right now when it comes to poetry and Charleston's practice community? Mm. Well, for one, I feel like it's too much of a separation. And that's been a conversation uh, because most of my friends are artists in some way, shape, or form. Um, and it always feels like it's art and poetry instead of art and poetry. Um, so I feel like the conversation right now is more so how can we kind of shift poetry and literature into the modern age and people are doing it people are doing it but you know it's just how can we continue that and, and what else should be brought into the modern age when it comes to obviously poetry and art i think that the ideas around publishing mm. um in the publishing industry needs to to, to kind of catch up a bit quite a bit <laughs> with with where people are where people are going i think that poetry needs to embrace more experimentation and understand that that forms are in essentially like genres and you should be allowed to bend them and craft them and accelerate them so that they do stick around in your new role miss asia what do you want to experiment Mm. that's a good question <laughs> i don't know i feel like i i tend to look at all things as experimental i'm definitely one of those people who learns the rules so i can break them <laughs> so i i look forward to experimenting with how poetry is perceived here mm. and uh how the people who are doing the poems who are performing like you know are the way that we present, I, I would like to help kind of update the ideas of that in people's minds. How is poetry perceived here in Charleston and how is it perceived elsewhere in the South? Mm, I think poetry can be looked at as a, like, okay, I will say this. Writing is a long game in, in terms of, or in comparison to other forms of art. You know, they often say that music is a young people's game. Like, there's an age limit. Writing, I'm going to be writing until I'm, you know, in the ground. So, I feel like poetry kind of gets looked at, you know, as an old form. You know, when they see poets, they expect us to be a little stuffy. And, like, you know, kind of respectable, in a sense. And... Poets don't really get the grace that other art forms get to be an area where people grow in. And I think especially in the South, you know, we deal with respectability politics constantly, especially, um, you know, showing up the way that I present. And I want people to understand that poetry, just like any other art form, is going to morph and it's going to look different and it's going to sound different. But that doesn't take away from its merit. Mm. So how will poetry sound and look different in the next five to ten years here in Charleston? Mm, if I have it my way. <laughs> <laughs> if I have it my way, poetry is going to look a lot more multi-generational. Mm. Um, it's going to look a lot more multiracial. And it's, not, it's going to look a lot more inclusive all around. Um, and it'll definitely look a bit more experimental. I look forward to, to playing with film and sounds and uh, visual art to really showcase all that poetry can do. Okay, visual arts and all those other things that you just mentioned a second ago. Which one of those really showcases your poetry the best? Mm. I think... Because of my influences, like I, I grew up uh, in a very music heavy family um, and my favorite poets tend to be musicians. So I think that sound art is probably what expresses. I also come from a spoken word background. So I think that like the, the sound element, it would add that extra, uh, that extra sweetness to a performance. Oh, and when you were performing, who is Asia May? In a sense, Asia May, in a sense, is an art project. Mm. You know, I, I consider this life in general an art project for me. Every day I'm creating and building onto it. 
And Asian Man is like an extension of that art project that gets to be the more front facing and the performance piece. I kind of zone out, let Asian May take over. And then when I'm off the stage, this version of me comes back. <laughs> it comes back. <laughs> That's I, I love that. I love that. And, you know, you know, you talked a lot about music and playlists in this interview. So if I were to look at your playlist right now, what would be on your play playlist? Mm. I so Jill Scott's concert is this weekend sure. um, in Columbia and Jill yes. Scott is probably my favorite poet Yes. so I've been listening uh, re-listening to her first uh, album oh. in preparation for the concert sure. um, it's been very neo soul heavy I want to say the early 2000s soul Aquarian era is probably the era of music that molded me the most so it's a lot of Raphael Sadiq and D'Angelo and, uh, you know, it's, yeah, it's been a lot of that lately. Wow. Wow. What's next for you? It's a very simplistic question I'm asking, but what's next hmm. for you? Um, well, let's see what's, what, what is next for me? I'm looking forward to, to playing around with craft. I'm looking forward to a lot of play. That's been a big thing for me this year. Uh, I love collaborating. I love uh, bringing people together. So I want to to play and dream with people a lot more and see what we can we can put up together. Who in this town would you collaborate with to make that happen? Um, well, I'm currently my my best friend. Her name is uh, well, their name is Nisi Blues. They are a uh, musician and composer, and we collaborate a lot. My partner. Um, his name is Concept Rich and he's a visual artist. So we collaborate a lot. We collaborated on the cover for my first, uh, poetry book. Well, my chat book that came out in 2016. Um, those are probably my best collaborators just because we, we get each other. We know how to keep each other running. Yes. Um, but there's so many great artists in this town. Like I'm just open again to talking to people and playing and seeing what comes up. And, and going back to the music that you love, like Jill Scott, D'Angelo, and others, from that music, which one of those musical artists actually resembles your poetry? I, I can honestly say that I, I, I model a lot of my sonic inflections after Jill Scott. Mm -hmm. uh, she has a tone and a cadence in her voice yes. that makes her words sound beautiful. And I feel like I've always... Since the first time I ever saw her perform, I was like, I want to, to make people feel the way she makes people feel with her words. And so I do, I study uh, a lot of the softness and tenderness that she brings into her vocals. I, I do try to emulate a lot of that. Wow, wow. That, that, that's really amazing. So how will you continue to make people feel good with your poetry in the next five to ten years? Um. I'm an empathic person, uh, and I feel like my poetry tends to lean to the emotion. So I feel like that's always going to be natural for me. I, I center and I ground myself in love. And I don't mean that in a, a like, I ignore everything, rainbows and sunshines. But, like, you know, love is the root of everything even your anger usually comes from a place of love for whatever it is and i try to make sure i remember that in my poems and to to be able to emulate that towards people so in the next five to ten years i'm i'm hoping that people see the times reflected honestly and uh find the love there there's so many issues going on in charleston right now from gentrification mm -hmm. to education to affordable housing to growth. If you could write a poem about what's going on in Charleston right now, what would that be? Hmm. Uh, um, uh, sorry. I, <laughs> I feel like there is so much going on in Charleston right now. And I, I feel like I would have a poem of questions because I think that we have a lot of people who say and do things and they don't really try to think about how it's affecting other people. So I would like to question um, 
to those who are who are doing things without thinking about the harm that they're causing. I, I would like to question uh, a lot of the things about that. Mm. Wow. Well, Charles is Port Laureate, writer, producer, performing poet, community curator, and organizer, Asia May. Thank you so much for your time. And again, welcome to Quentin's Post Ups. Well, thank you for having me, Quentin. Oh, you're very welcome. <laughs>